What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the German Bear Podcast and today we got a big film breakdown of one of the newest Chicago Bears an interior offensive lineman Ryan Bates. <laughs> Before the 2024 NFL free agency even started, Ryan Poles was active to adding to the Chicago Bears roster and just generating more depth and quality to the Bears overall. And he started that off with going after Ryan Bates, a player he tried to acquire previously in his early years as a Chicago Bears GM and now finally got him to the Bears, which is very, very exciting to me as we'll see how good he actually looked on tape for the Buffalo Bills. But before we want to do that, let's quickly check out the details for this trade to Chicago Bears got Ryan Bates for a fifth round pick in 2024 from the Buffalo Bills and for the contract details actually he is on a four year 17 million dollar deal and has two years left and over those next two seasons for the Chicago Bears he's going to have a cap hit of four million dollars per season. Now for the value given up you get an incredible value in return with Ryan Bates we'll see that in today's conclusion as well he's a perfect addition to gain more depth on offense and he also has starting potential to say the least as well and he definitely will challenge Coleman Shelton and in my opinion also Nate Davis at offensive guard for their starting spot so it's going to be really interesting what happens in training camp but as I said we'll talk about that more in depth in today's conclusion so with that being said let's actually move on and start off with the film room episode and look at how good Ryan Bates actually is on tape and where he is suited best. <laughs> And I mean, the one thing that pops off of tape, honestly, is right away his incredible versatility. He can play all interior offensive line spots and did that for the Buffalo Bills, a very good football team, honestly, as well. And for me, overall, I came away with the conclusion that he is actually better at guard than at center, which might be surprising to some people. But overall, we'll look into both spots and what he did and what he was able to do on tape. And in a conclusion, we also will talk about this a little bit more, his position and his fit on the Chicago Bears offense. But now actually starting off with what I saw on tape, Ryan Bates possesses really good length as a center as well as a guard and really good hand placement. He combines that with really good leverage that he plays with and that makes a damn solid pass protector in the interior in my opinion. Also he has really great foot quickness to redirect and shift positions quickly and his feet never stop moving as we'll see in a couple of examples following now. But yeah, starting off with one example against the Pittsburgh Steelers looking into that play a little bit deeper he's facing a cover three blitz by the Steelers defense and they will actually send a linebacker through the B gap on the backside where he plays at at right guard and Ryan Bates here does a phenomenal job of playing his zone and gap assignment stays on the double team as long as possible and then recognizes with his head moving around and just scanning the field the blitz and with quick feed he closes the B gap and picks up the blitz and this is just a perfect example of showing every Everything that he can do he's a smart player he can redirect quickly he has great feet that never stop moving and he can pick up guys easily and just recognize those things on the fly which is not easy to say the least and then another example against the Kansas City Chiefs which is probably my favorite rep that we're going to watch the entire video today it's basically a elite pass pro rep against Chris Jones a all pro defensive lineman of the Kansas City Chiefs and what Chris Jones does here is he will threaten Ryan Bates actually vertically here from the four position that he's standing in and he will create a big space for him to work with which is absolutely scary to say the least in my opinion if I would be in Ryan Bates situation where Chris Jones creates a lot of space against me I would probably start to cry but Ryan Bates on this one does an incredible one hell of a job actually and Bates first of all does a great job of staying square has a really good base on that play and gets there quickly to just be in front of Chris Jones who as I said attacks vertically on that play and then I love the attention to detail here by Ryan Bates shows his right arm early in the rep to bait Chris Jones into acting early and starting to initiate contact first and then, which I think is genius, he drops his right arm just before the contact actually initiates and then with his left hand places it at the exposed chest of Chris Jones to initiate the first contact and have a good punch here to not shock Chris Jones because Chris Jones is elite. He's not going to be shocked by anything in the NFL, but he still does a good job here of placing his hands on the chest and just using that to his advantage with faking a right arm punch and then just punching with his left and that was, I think, real good detail here by Ryan Bates to actually actually have a chance here 
on that rep here against Chris Jones. And then he anchors pretty well on that play, drops his butt as well as you can against Chris Jones. And just a phenomenal rep for me, honestly, to just with lots of details, win against Chris Jones and having a good pass pro rep against him, which is something that not a lot of people can do in the NFL overall. So that was really, really good to see on tape. But for him in general, as a pass protector, he's definitely not flawless in all interior offensive line spots, no matter if he plays center or guard. He does have some tape where he definitely does struggle, and it's kind of like Shelton Coleman, so if you didn't check that out, feel free to check out my film room breakdown of his tape, but just like Shelton, he will be exposed to bull rushes with stronger players headed up against him, and he does definitely also struggle to be consistent with his anchor, which is the problem with that. He is a strong player no matter what. We'll see that in the run game, but overall, if a guy is stronger and bigger than you, you probably expect to lose and this is what happens with Ryan Bates at times for sure and there's multiple examples where he gets driven all the way back into the quarterback's face and the same actually goes for his hands too I mean against elite rushers he will be exposed by them for his hand placement and even though he had a great rep here against Chris Jones there's also an example where Chris Jones gets him back with a great hand swipe move and just beats him within the first second with just pure hand placement so he just needs to get a little bit more consistent in that area but overall Ryan Bates for real is a really solid pass protector and you can still feel pretty good about him protecting a quarterback as we now move on to his stronger aspect of his game just like kind of Shelton Coleman again is actually his run game and what he possesses here is just incredible speed and quickness for an offensive lineman and strength as well for me Ryan Bates especially when playing at guard he's just an absolute ass kicker that loves to go on to run into the second level and just beat up some defensive backs or some linebackers and he 100% thrives in the run game as a player. Almost, I would even say, consider him an elite mover, honestly, when you see him getting out into the second level. I think he does an outstanding job of being really smooth when he moves. He's really quick to the spot and has really quick feet too. So that's a big benefit. And one aspect where you see that completely in the run game is actually when he is on reach blocks, getting into the second level. And not just reach blocks against defensive line. And no, we're talking reach blocks against linebackers and corners cornerbacks which is a super super tough job to do and it's a long way that you have to go there as an offensive lineman and that's why I say he has borderline elite movement skills because he gets to his spots all the time and never gets tired feet in those scenarios if he lays a block on you in the second level you won't get off of him and that's just a big benefit that opens up so many possibilities in the run game and that's something I really really liked on tape also on double teams he understands those and what he needs to do in those situations same applies here movement wise angle wise and footwork skills but also what I saw on tape was really good timing to move on from the defensive lineman to the linebacker or cornerback because it's always important to secure the first level first before you actually move on to the second level and he landed some key blocks there on some runs where he had perfect timing actually moving off of that first block that he was playing so that was a nice detail that I saw on tape as well that impressed me but overall for him as a run protector it kind of applies the same as for him as a pass protector he's not perfect he can be a little bit over aggressive at times which can lead to him actually oversetting which will put him into bad positions against the defensive lineman and then another thing that was honestly only there once on tape but I still want to say it is his feet stopped on one play on tape and he got beat badly and got just shedded off of a block and thrown around but that could be a one-time thing I haven't seen it consistently on tape which is good but still wanted to mention that there that at times he can get overpowered also in the run game even though he is definitely an ass kicker. And with that being said, we actually want to move on to the overall assessment of Ryan Bates as a player. Talking position first and foremost, because that's pretty interesting for me, honestly. And to me, personally, he's a clear better guard than center. And that's where he made the most starts by far in his career as well. That's where he made his most money with and just got the most experience throughout his years in the NFL. But overall, he definitely still has a shot at competing for the starting center spot as well with Shelton Coleman. And he's not a bad center. That's not what I'm saying. I think he's just even better suited at guard. That's what I'm trying to say here. But if anything, overall, even if he doesn't start, he is a really, really good backup player that plays 
all interior offensive line spots, which is such a high value pick here. Also borderline elite mover, as I said, and just a super smart player too that can give you all the callouts at center and knows those callouts in and out as well as a guard. So that's a lot of benefit from one player. And to me, Ryan Poles basically added depth to three interior line positions with one player, which is incredible. And as I said in the beginning of the video, for me, he truly also has a shot of playing over Nate Davis because he really disappointed me in 2023 and I didn't expect him to get bullied that much by defensive linemen so for me Ryan Bates has really a shot at being a starting player for the Chicago Bears either at center or offensive guard but anyway he's going to be a really really valuable asset and for a fifth round pick I'll take that every day of the week really smart move by Ryan Poles and I just absolutely love this pickup but yeah with that being said that's the end of the episode guys I hope you've enjoyed it definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Chicago Bears adding Ryan Bates to the roster like and subscribe if you liked the video check out Instagram and Twitter if you want to as well and as always guys bear down